my name's Scott. I'm from Royan Grey Manchester. I'm an Adidas collector and I mainly collect vintage from the 1960s and 1970s and possibly early 80s. I was originally buying vintage trainers in the mid-90s, back in 1995. On the whole, really, I've got about 400 pairs. Majority of them are reissues or limited editions and stuff like that. And I'd say about 200 of them are vintage. We was going around to just all the second-hand boutiques at the time, and it was buying trainers like the Tobacco, like the Dublin and the Berlin, were one of the first ones, and I was paying like, £25 a pair for them. There was a place called uh, Oasis, which used to be in Market Street, Manchester, in the underground part. And he, uh, he can tend to import a lot of the old trainers from like Germany. That was the very first time that I actually got familiar with these trainers because I was used to a, sp a certain specific Adidas shoe. And then when I saw these, I didn't even realise they were Adidas because there was nothing stamped on them except for like on the sole and probably in the inner tongue. So. And then I started collecting again around 2003 when the Dublins came back out and I kind of like the reissue for them. They're, they're one of my favourites because they were nice and solid. They were a good quality trainer. I started buying a lot of the retro reissues first and then I started collecting a few vintage and then obviously sold them to obviously fund other things. And then I started collecting again about six years ago. I think it goes back to your childhood in, in a lot of ways, but the, the trainers that, that I would really love to have for growing up in the 80s, obviously they were just inaccessible. My best friend, um, Paul Island, he was really on top of vintage trainers. He, he loved the Adidas jeans and he loved the Adidas London and it wasn't until about 2009, 2010 that I started buying the original ones from all over the world and then obviously with the sort of rise of social media then obviously that accelerated the, the collection quite a lot and I met a lot of really, really good friends along the way so and that's why the, the vintage that I own today is, is as big as it is. My first pair of Adidas was the kick. Um, I'd seen a, a guy on my street called Ronnie Franklin wearing these shoes and I thought they were really cool. They just looked basic. They were just a, a black and white football orientated shoe, but there was just something about them. Three stripes and that, that Trefal logo really sort of, you know, I gravitated towards them. I just thought they really looked a cool trainer. And I was looking through my mum's catalog at them and she refused to buy them. So I had to save up any errand money, but obviously it took quite a long time because I was buying sweets and things like that. So it wasn't an easy process. By the time I did buy them, I absolutely loved them. And I did probably the inevitable, what my mum and dad feared I'd do. <laughs> Use them as a back break for my BMX and they did get wrecked. This is the Adidas Kick. These were actually made in France, 1979, in superb, unworn condition. There's absolutely no way to sold whatsoever. This was basically a starting platform for any kid in the 1980s with these trainers because of the price tag. I mean, they're only like 10, 12 pounds a pair. And I think every kid who actually got onto the Adidas brand started off with these. These are actually made of like a split synthetic leather in contrast with the white um, stripes. And they were basically an indoor and outdoor shoe, uh, but they were specifically made for winter. So in the UK, these were widely available right through to the mid nineties. And then they were reissued in the early 2000s and they've been reissued uh, not so long back. But this particular pair, I, I love because of its simplicity. I also like the shape of it. And obviously the, the old French logo there. So I'd say they, these are a fantastic shoe. They were very well built. A lot of these trainers were prone to fall apart on the front here, but obviously this being an unworn pair, I don't think we'll get as much damage to them. There were certain trainers I liked and there's, there's certain ones I didn't. For example, like I never sort of found Adidas runners comfortable, so I moved into other brands, but I always seem to come back to these and especially the with the vintage because they were made such a long time ago. It's nice to own a piece of history. 
music as well. A lot of these trainers have, have been regenerated and reinvigorated because of music, especially the Gazelle, because the, the Gazelle was, I'd say it was pinpointed to the breakdancing era in the 80s, and then the Acid House era in the late 80s, early 90s, and then Britpop. I mean, I've never seen so many people wear a pair of Gazelle at an Oasis concert. About 80% of people were in Gazelle in 1996 when I went to see my main role down in Nebworth. The very first vintage that I loved and really wanted was the Burn. I'd seen um, some on the, uh, it was on an old Adidas German catalogue from 1974. And it was the Stockholm, the Amsterdam, the Brussels and the Bern. And I just loved the colours of them. The the dark, the navy with the uh, acid green stripes. They just looked really beautiful. And, and it took me quite a few years to find some. And then with the event of social media, there was a guy, a local to me called Derek Flickcroft. And he had a pair a burn um, on one of his photographs and I thought to myself I've got to get me some of them now that, that, that the bug is there you know I've got to get them and then I had somebody called Dimitri from Russia he inboxed me and said I've got a pair of 70s burn would you like them so and I, I said well yeah okay yeah I'd love them and they came around Christmas I think it was about 2014 and I was absolutely amazed by them and it was that, that was the very first vintage that I, that I really wanted. And then after that, everything just kind of flowed. I just wanted the Brussels and the Athen and them kind of trainers with the gum sole. And I wanted to try and like have a bit of a collection of them first before I moved on to any of the others. So I don't think there's any trainers really that, that, that I like them, to be honest. I mean, in terms of runners, runners all look quite similar whereas trainers like these they, they, I think there was only like Puma that was probably the closest at the time but uh, the, I don't know I think it's just because of the way they're made and the, the quality of them by then are absolutely superb I love the, the colours as well the extravagant colours because in the 1960s a, a lot of Adidas were just mainly bold colours you had whites you had blacks you had blues and you had reds, and that's about as far as it went. So when they started bringing them out in more vibrant colours, I think that's what really got me more interested in them. And, and I think that's why I capitalised on getting more vibrant colours as opposed to just the bold ones. These are Tahiti, made in France, 1975. This was part of the second wave of leisure shoes from the French side of the Adidas factory. The idea was basically these were shoes that you could wear on a dress down occasion as opposed to an indoor sports shoe. They all shared more or less the same silhouette as the tobacco from 1973 onwards. And this was the very first sort of style that came in this beautiful ocean blue color in the tonal blue stripes. I'd seen these quite a long time ago, about 10, 12 years ago, and I instantly fell in love with them and everything about them just, to me, just screamed vintage. So I had to have them. And then I actually saw um, a pair for sale on one of the uh, forums. So I instantly I made a beeline for them and paid quite a hefty sum for them. I'd say these are one of my top favorites in my collection, to be honest. The ones that I consider one of the best ever made, in my opinion. I've got all the original Dublin, apart from West Germany, which um, will be on the way shortly. And uh, the Athen. Well, I've got all the original West German series of them up and up to 1980. I think it's because the Athen came out in 1969 and it was the reason why I wanted so many is because the pairs are varied. They had different soles, they had different colours, they had different tongues and they were different shapes. So I think that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want the same trainer. Uh, of every you know if it was exactly the same train I wouldn't want it but because they varied from year to year that's why I wanted to start collecting them so and you will find with Athen that that, that was the case they'd have totally different souls to what in 1969 that what they would have in 1980 plus the colours as well I, I love I, I have an affinity for blue and white trainers 
if, if anything, blue is probably the, the most color that I, that I own out of all my Adidas trainers. These are Dublin. These were made in Romania about 1979, 1980. There's a couple of variations of the Romanian Dublin. Uh, one has a, a darker brown uh, combi shell sole, and this one has the obviously the, the lighter version. Uh, but other than that, there's, there's not that much difference really in between them. These were also made in Yugoslavia. I was also made in West Germany, as well as here in, in Romania. The Dublin actually came out in 1976. So I think the color theme is meant to be the sunset over the river Liffey. Um, I don't know how true that is, but that's what I, that's what I read somewhere along the line for explaining for its blue and orange territory. They were also made in Taiwan from around 1979 to 1981. And there's the rare navy version of the uh, Taiwanese and the brown version of the Taiwanese. The reissues compared to these are uh, fairly similar, to be honest. I think the modeling of the 08 and the 17 are obviously being more or less copied from the Romanian version, encompassing the West Germany dimple tongue up until last year when they had the uh, contrasting suede tongue. I'd love to see the Wimbledon back. I would love to see the Lendl Pro back as well because that for me was a great time in tennis watching Ivan Lendl because even though he wasn't the world's best player he was so aggressive on the court and I just loved watching him do his, his little backhanded swings and stuff like that. I, I, I really loved Ivan Lendl and I loved the the Adidas endorsement at the time with the, the Argyle tops and the Lendo Pro and the Belendo competition. Those kind of trainers I, I really loved in the 80s. And um, at that point, about 85, 86, I think 47 pounds was the most expensive pair of Adidas that I ever owned. And, you know, these days it's now 10 a penny but back then that was like regarded like you were paying 300 pounds for a pair of shoes and as far as suede's go uh the java nardi borneo I'd, I'd like to see them back because they've done an impressive job with bringing back some of the the island series but i think them are quite overlooked the most i own are from the 70s every one of these are from the 70s i think it's just because suede's were particularly statutory is like in the 70s there were so many of them it became like rudimentary to wear suede trainers and but by the early 80s that had faded out with the with the rise of the tennis shoe and the jogger and the runner so i think it's just because of the simple shapes of them that i, I really like them one of the rarest i'd say are these these mexicana there's only a handful of people I know that actually own this shoe. This was made in Austria in 1976 and they're unworn. They even got like the original size label inside the insert there. Not only that, they have velour stripes. Mexicana usually have leather stripes. Uh, the only other pair that I know of that have velour stripes were made in France about 1968, 69. So this was actually the last shoe made by Adidas um, in the Mexicana range, after that they see making them up until the reissues a couple of years ago. So I'd say that's one of the rarest that I own. There's actually a couple that, that I own that are very rare, what collectors are, are really searching for, that I'm fortunate to have. I have the French Trinidad, uh, which was made around 1974. I have Tahiti Marine. I have the Bali, which Adidas used to make the the new reissues. These are Adidas Barley. Uh, they were made in France between 1977 and 1981. There's a variation of colors in these. This is the first version, which is like a nice aqua green color um, in contrast with the marine uh, stripes. There was different versions. There's a pale blue version and the 1980 version had a different toe strip. It was more like a T-toe shape as opposed to this style. The idea of these was they were never available in UK shops, they were only available through catalogue distribution and Adidas at the time had a contract with Peter Blacks over in Keighley so that was the only way that you could actually get these shoes, it was only catalogue based. So they were pretty elusive and not many of them was actually made so there's only like a handful of people in the world that actually own them. 
This pair actually belonged to Bobby Mac Dazzler and he sold them to me last year after years and years of me basically <laughs> just loving them and loving the style, loving the colours and telling him how beautiful they are and eventually he caved in and sold them to me so and I did I actually use these as a template for the new reissue so I feel quite honoured to actually own these. Island series is, is one of them areas where the, the, if the shoe looks nice, then, then I'll, I'll buy it. It's not necessarily a collective. It, it depends on how they look. If it's, if it's appealing to the eye, then, then I'll get it. There's, there's no sort of structure to like get all the Island series and there's no structure to get all the City series. There are, there are some trainers which I don't like in that category, so I won't get them. I, I only get really what appeals to me. I've not had to travel, but I've certainly had to pay the bucks. Um, then Mexicana cost a king's ransom because, um, like I say, there's, there's not many of them exist anymore. And there wasn't many of them made when they actually stopped production on them. The majority of people who do own them have them in small sizes. So, and that's actually my size. I'd say that's one of the hardest, and I'd say Tahiti Marine was one of the hardest to get hold of as well. It's taken me a good 12 years to get hold of a pair of Tahiti Marine, and it took me about eight years to get the original Tahiti, which were both made in France, and part of that island series format. These are Tahiti Marine, which are obviously the dark counterpart of the other Tahiti. Uh, these were not exclusive so they were only made in France and only available on the American market so they're a lot harder to get hold of. Uh, these were manufactured between 1974 and around 1978 I think was the last pair that came out and they had like leather stripes instead of the, the uh, beautiful soft law stripes that you see here but essentially it was the same shoe. So this shoe is very very rare now and uh, this particular pair I found um, on a Japanese website and they were not in the best of uh, conditions to be honest with you so I sent them to a good friend Itoshi in Japan and he basically restored them he restored the stripes and uh, he gave them a really good clean and and then I sent them over to another friend over in Plymouth called Aidy and he finished them off and they absolutely look stunning I'd, I'd say this is very top tier trainer in my collection and really proud to own these and I've been after them for a very long time probably about 15 years of me first seeing them I had to have a pair and I was fortunate enough to get these I was on the sneaker forums in the uh, early to mid 2000s anyway on the internet so I built up a relationship with with various collectors and um, Bobby McCartan, Bobby my dazzler he's he's one that I've always spoken to about the old school type trainers and we became friends through those networks like kickbox that's how we became friends and that's how we sort of like relate to each other in in terms of collecting vintage whereas now with the likes of facebook and instagram there's a whole plethora of them so you do meet a lot of people who are in the same mindset as you obviously then you be you begin to like build friendships from that so and i have quite a lot of friends now who stuck by me for the past like 10 years there's there's um there's guppy in canada He's one of my closest friends, and if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have so many of these. There's Alan Yorib, and there's Jonathan Alston, there's Daniel Holmes. There's a lot of all these old school collectors who are in exactly the same mindset as myself, and they're the best people I find to talk to about the, these vintage shoes, because a lot of these collectors do have probably the same ones as I do. And it's just nice to build those relationships. I'd say the Adidas community is, it is one of them places where you do find really good friends and you do build relationships with. I mean, I've been out with them, we've, we've had nights out. But we don't talk about Adidas shoes, obviously, but the, the friendships that, that are once built from that, you know, I've, I've never looked back and I've never regretted being, you know, in the groups. And I've never regretted meeting these people because they are fantastic people at the end of the day.